Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Achana. Welcome to episode 31, the last, the last, the very last episode of Network Chat Programming. And today, we're just going to basically clear up a few things, do a few kind of admin, kind of bug fixing stuff, and basically make this piece of software ready to go. So, um, to do that, okay, first of all, let me just show you guys the kind of bugs that we have, okay, and the, the, the stuff that we deal with. First of all, there's no way to quit the server um, cleanly. We could just terminate it. That's not clean, so we've got to do that. But if I start the server over here and I go ahead and open a client, so when log in, I'll make a uh, yarn localhost A192 as usual, of course. Um, and then I go ahead and type something like, hey, all right, what you'll actually see here is, um, is that we don't actually have, it. it's weird, like on Mac over here, it shows that we kind of do, but we don't actually have a termination character over here, okay? I was, I was testing this out on Windows like a good boy. I was testing it on different operating systems and I found that um, we don't have a slash, we don't have a slash A on the end of this and it's hard to see here, but we don't, okay? So to fix this, we're gonna go ahead and go into client window and inside client window, we have a, uh, let's go ahead and see. We've got a send and you can see on message, we, we go ahead and we append the slash M slash the message, but we don't append the slash E slash. So make sure you put that in. Otherwise you're going to have a bad day. Okay. Because the server will receive a massive packet and on windows, you can actually see that it takes up a lot of space. Okay. Important stuff. So if we launch this again, just to verify it works, you'll be able to see that. Yes, indeed it does work. Okay. So, Hey, and there we go. No difference visible here, but on windows for some reason, uh, there's a massive difference. And if you don't do that, you'll see a massive, you'll, you'll see a scroll pane appear over here, like a scroll bar. And, uh, and if you highlight the text, you can see that it's actually going to be very long. Okay. So we need to do that. Okay. Brilliant. Now let's talk about the server stuff. So quitting, how do we quit? Well, um, we need to make a private void, um, quit. Okay. And in quit, I want to do a few things, right? One thing we should do is just disconnect all of our packets, right? So let's terminate this because it was already running. Um, so we should really disconnect everyone. So for in i equals zero, i is less than clients dot size i plus plus, we can go ahead and say um, that for each of these, let's go ahead and disconnect client, uh, sorry, clients dot get i dot get id with the status of true because the server closed down. Um, once we've done that, we can go ahead and close. Well, first of all, we should set running equal to false, right? And then after what we should do is close the socket. Now closing the socket generates an exception in Java. Okay. And it's, it's not really a, you failed, you've done something wrong. I'm crashing exception. Okay. It's more of a, uh, by the way, you've closed the socket exception. So it's really like a mess, like a friendly message, but it appears as, as an exception. And you'll see what I mean here. Um, when I demonstrate it, but over here in, uh, in our run method here, right? This is the run method. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and add a new command. So you can see else if message starts with kick, that's the kick command. This is the end of it. So I'll go ahead and add it an else if uh, message dot, sorry, not message. What is it? Is it text? Yeah. Te text dot equals um, quit. Yeah. We'll go ahead and we'll quit. Okay. Um, and if we test this out, right, if we come up here, clear this, we will launch the server. Um, and then we're we'll going to go ahead and do slash quit. You can see we get this socket closed and you can see it's not really an error. It just lets us know that, okay, we've closed the socket and it terminates properly. It does not crash. It just terminates. And if we go ahead and see this com cherno thing, this is where the problem occurs. Not really a problem again, but if we click on this, you can see that it appears in the receive method. Now to stop it from happening, you can see that here we print the stack trace. Great. If it's an IO exception, we probably do want to print the stack trace because that is an error, but we don't, if we have a socket exception, because you can see over here that this is a socket exception. So to fix this just before this, this uh, IO exception, I'm actually going to copy and paste this line above it. Okay. And above it, I will put a socket exception E. Okay. And here just blank. Okay. There's nothing in here at all. Okay. And that will just make sure that if it's, a, if, if it's, if there's a socket exception, it won't print anything. Um, whereas if it's an IO exception, it will. Now, if you were to switch places with these, so if I put this, Oh, what have I done? Did not mean to do that. Where are we? Here we are. Now, if I were to switch places with these like this, right? Um, that's going to give us an error because you can see it says that unreachable code block because 
IO exception actually engulfs socket exception. So make sure you do it above IO exception, okay? Just like that and it'll work fine. Now, um, that stuff, if we go ahead and test that again, you can see that if we start the server once more and we type in slash quit, it quits cleanly, okay? And you can see this termination thing goes out after a while. So it doesn't shut down instantly because it doesn't terminate. It just takes its time, it, it closes all the sockets, finishes everything, uh, it disconnects all the clients and closes down well, okay? That's good. Now, let's go ahead and add one more thing, okay? If, if a user types in, the, types in the command in a wrong way or something, then we want to kind of give them that feedback. So else, right? Else, if basically all, all this stuff happens if, uh, if our text here starts with a slash because that means it's a command, right? So if none of these, if, if the user type in something like slash blah, 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 then that's not a command, so let's handle that. So let's go ahead and tell the user, you know, let's print a nice help message. And I'm actually gonna make it a separate method because I'm gonna do it twice. Um, but private void print help. And we can print a nice little help message that will let the uh, let the server admin know how to use his goddamn server, okay? So in order to do that, um, we can just go ahead and say something along the lines of, uh, here is a list, list of all available commands, okay? Um, and then we might uh, just add a bunch of equal signs just to make it kind of like a uh, like an underlined phrase here. Um, and then we can add all the commands. So what commands do we have? We've got a slash raw, right? And that enables raw mode. We don't have to explain what that is. They can figure it out for themselves. <laughs> um, slash clients, right? That'll, uh, I guess that uh, shows um, all connected clients. We'll put a full stop at the end of all of these, by the way, make it look a bit nicer, more formal. Um, another thing that we'll do is we'll print out, what, what, what else is there? There's um, kick, so kick and then the user ID uh, or username. So that kicks a user, the specified user, obviously, but uh, we don't have to put that in, I don't think. Um, slash help, of course, that shows this. We could also make it um, slash question mark. Ah, now nah, screw that. You guys can figure that out for yourselves if you want it. Um, so Prince shows this help message. And then finally, uh, the other one is uh, quit, right? So quit, uh, shuts down the server. All right, great. So we'll go ahead and print that. And we'll also go ahead and print um, that this is a uh, unknown command. Full stop. All right, cool. So um, we'll actually make one more here, which is obviously the help one because we've just typed it in help here. <laughs> so else if uh, text dot equals help, then um, we'll go ahead and uh, let's see. I'm just trying to, that should have been fine. Oh, we've, we've got a bracket, that's all. Um, if, if our text is help, we'll print help. Okay, and there you go. That's pretty much it. So if we go ahead and open this again, start it, we can print something like, oops, we can print out help. Here's a list of available commands, great. We can print out, we can turn, turn raw mode. We should probably, uh, actually, let's just terminate this quickly now. If we enable raw mode, we probably want to tell the user, the user that we've done that so that he can see what state it's in as well. So if text equals raw, um, if raw mode is on, then we can print something like, um, because it's gonna be turned off. So raw mode off, okay? Otherwise, else, we can print raw mode on. Okay, and you'll see what this does in a minute. You can probably guess already, but uh, basically if we type in slash raw, it'll turn it on now, and raw will turn it off, okay? Simple as that. Now, um, if we type in slash help, we can see everything, what everything is. If we type, if we type in slash clients, you know, we can see all this stuff. Now, if we type in slash yarn, that's not a command. It'll tell us unknown command and here's a list of all available commands. Great, fantastic. That is it, guys. That is the end of network chat programming. I hope you guys did enjoy it as much as I did. It was awesome. I'll put up another video probably after this one, just being like, you know, finale. Thanks for watching everything, blah, blah, blah. And a few things that you guys can, can continue with this, of course. Don't forget that all this code is on GitHub. Uh, there'll be a link in the description of this video um, so you guys can expand on this. Um, 
and stuff like that. But anyway, that is pretty much it, right? So the whole purpose of this series pretty much was, uh, apart from to learn how to make an awesome chat program like we just did, the whole purpose was to, of course, uh, basically lead into multiplayer for the game programming series. So of course, if, you're, if you guys are new to my channel or whatever and you haven't checked out the game programming series, I highly recommend that because we'll be implementing multiplayer very, very soon. Um, but I really do hope that you guys did enjoy Network Share Programming. I thought it was an awesome little series that I did. 31 episodes and uh, 31 episodes of just pure gold, right? Am I right? One more thing that I forgot to mention as well was that we should probably close the little scanner that we've got. So in uh, in, server, in server, we've got, uh, I've got this run method. We've got a scanner that we open, but we never close it, okay? So over here, conveniently in this space, we'll just type in uh, scanner.close, and we'll actually move that down over here, okay? Scanner.close, it'll just close out our scanner and make Java happy, all right? See you guys later, goodbye.